Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video, thanks for joining me. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over the progression and looking at how the Monte Carlo without CO2 has turned out. Now, one of my viewers contacted me the other day to ask for an update, so this is for you, Ali, I think this is right, Ali Booby, nice name. So this is for you, so if that's something that interests you, then please stay tuned. Without further ado, let's crack on with today's video. Okay, so welcome back. So like I said, we're gonna be taking a look at Bruce the Beta Fish's nano tank. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I'm be, I will be looking to upgrade these setups very, very soon. Now, with the Monte Carlo is done really, really well, as you can see, so it's carpeted out massively. Now, because I've never used CO2 in the past, obviously we just started using it now on the ADA 45P, that I was, as a lot of people, I was probably a bit dubious about trying out carpet plants without CO2 just because obviously it promotes the growth a lot quicker, it tends to be a lot thicker um, than without CO2. So I was really hesitant whether to do it and I've spoken to a few people about it and in the end I just decided to crack on and give it a go. So I think if you're looking to try and do these things, my advice to you would be just go ahead and give it a go. What have you got to lose? Don't spend a fortune on it if you're not sure if it's going to work or not, but why not give it a go? It could work, like this has. So, but as much as things can go right in a fish room, like we looked at the Monte Carlo, you know, I had some great success with it, something I didn't think it would actually work, so it was nice to know that you could do that on quite a low budget and a low tech setup. But as much as good things happen, there's also bad, and I like to try and share both of you rather than just go, oh, I'm great at everything. I'm not. So, unfortunately, this no, yesterday morning I woke up, I came in the room, and I don't know if you're the same if you've got pets or a room like this, whether you can walk in and sort of instantly sense that something's not right, which I did. And unfortunately, looked around all the tanks and checked out the discus. Unfortunately, one of the discus was floating at the top on its side. Now, first of all, shock. Um, we done a water change on them a couple of days ago. Everything had been fine, they've been eating well. There's been no changes in the tank, no new stocking, anything like that. So it was a real shock why this had happened. So I took a look at the fish and he was floating on the top and had a really swollen stomach. Now the only thing I can try and pull that down to was la the night before, I did try them on these bug bites, which they had some in the past, but they only had once before. Now I don't know whether, because these float for a little while, they were gulping at the top and getting air into, in, into the fish and causing it to float, I don't know. But it looked like I had a blockage, so we I had I run out in the morning and got some Epsom salts because that's sort of like a natural laxative, and as well humans use I think to after exercise try and calm their muscles down. So it acts as a natural laxative for the fish. I also tried to feed peas to try and clear any blockage or anything that the fish needs to get rid of. Now we added some Epsom salts and initially when I put the salts in, now I put the fish in a quarantine tank, only a small one for the time being. Now when I put the salts in, the fish did start swimming down towards the Epsom salts, it started swimming around a bit, so that was a good sign. Um, and then I have been treating every four hours, so I come up to the next four hours, and the fish was lying on the floor. So it looked like the swelling and the blockage might have gone, um, but the fish still isn't or wasn't looking great. Um, so I've continued with that now, so all day yesterday, every four hours, I had some Epsom salts in there and seemed to clear the blockage. Now I've repeated the process today, and I think they've had two courses of the Epsom salts. For those of you who are not sure what I'm talking about, I just got this from a local health store. Now it's only about three pounds, so maybe five dollars, um, and quite a big bag. So it's always good to have here for similar issues. But I'm still treating the fish at the moment. I don't want to put too much footage on there. It's quite upsetting to see a sick fish. I doubt you guys want to see that, but I'll put a little clip so you've got an idea of what's going on. Um, but I'm going to carry on treating, carry on um, separating the fish. I'm hoping that I can bring it back to health. As you probably already know with animals yourselves, it's really upsetting when something like this happens. But we have to carry on. We've got other animals to look after as well. And obviously make sure we keep up the, uh, with the care for everything else in this room. So I'm going to try not to let it get me down, as it always does. You know, it's an animal we love and care for, so it's always a horrible situation to be in. But I'm going to carry on trying to do my best to try and get this fish back to health. Um, it was a real shame, it was the one we had initially when we first bought it had the clouded eye, which we managed to get rid of because it must have just had poor water quality um, in transit or in the, in the store, I don't know. So I really want to try hard to make sure we get these anim this fish better and back to health. 
It's pretty disappointing really to have an update like this for you. Um, I know we've been aiming towards getting the disc escape set up. But now on that topic, yeah, I was struggling for a video this week to be fair. I wanted to keep you updated with what's going on, even though there's you know, some bad news to be fair. I want to try and be as transparent as I can with you because you know these things happen and it's good for you to be aware of both sides of the hobby. But things are going to be put on hold a little bit for the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll still try and get content out on a Wednesday and Sunday for you as much as I can. But what I mean by that is we were looking to plow ahead and get the disc escape done. Um, I've since moved the room around a little bit more since the last time because I uh, didn't really quite like how things were set out. So let's have a quick look at how the room's looking. I moved the discus tank around like you can see and the 20 gallon and the five belly toe has been moved from the fireplace over into the corner which I think they're going to stay there now. Eventually I'll have to move the five belly toads because the opening opens on this side so if I had it where it is now I would not be able to have anything next to it. But we are going to be delayed a couple of weeks on the disc escape unfortunately I know some of you are excited by that but this but we're still going to get it done. Um, I'm just going to get it, I've got an engineer coming around to fix my boiler and add a new boiler uh, next Wednesday. So hopefully we'll get that done within a couple of days, which means having to remove a lot of these tanks, um, enclosures out of this room, ripping the carpets up, taking the floorboards up and actually doing our work. So when that's done, I'm going to try and get an electrician around then straight away afterwards, try and get some extra socket points in here, which will mean again the floorboards will be up and some of the tanks will be out of this room. But once all those things are done, then hopefully we can just plow on, crack on with the escape, get all this wall finished, get some reptiles in, do all the fun things we talked about and I promise you, and they're still coming, so don't go anywhere. And now is probably a perfect time if you're a new subscriber to this channel, first of all, hello. But it's a perfect time now to get involved, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and make sure you don't miss any future videos. But I'm hoping as well to try and, if I can, I don't know if it's possible, try and get a, a hot and cold tap in this room. Um, and maybe just a drainage area just so I can do the water changes in this room and save some time. So that'll be a dream if I can do that. We'll see. A little bit close. But I just wanted to give it a bit of an update, um, especially for you who asked for one, which is Ali Booby, I think. So I hope this has helped and I'll put some B-roll into this tank as well now and as well I'll do a compilation at the end as I always do, just so you can see how this has progressed. Now the tank is done okay in terms of the carpeting plans, but I'm not happy with the other plans so we'll probably add some of the plans we have in the bin to try and improve on this tank because we're not going to get upgraded for at least a month, but that will be coming very soon as well as adding the shelves to the alcove and then as well we'll be adding the new ADA tanks in there. So I hope you're excited about that. But as always, I really, really appreciate any of your support. We're coming up to 3,000 subscribers now, which is insane. Never expected to get that. You know, let's push for 10,000, that's a dream. And let's keep moving forward with this channel. So if you do me a massive favor, if you're a regular viewer, if you do it, give me that thumbs up and just drop me a comment just to show you you're enjoying this sort of content and allows me to make more videos like these. If you're a new viewer, then do me a massive favor, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out any future videos. But as always, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, I'll see you next time. Say bye, Bruce. See you next time.